Okay. Everyone's ready? Yes. Okay. Today I'm going to talk to you about Git branching models. I'm Tristan Roussel. I'm an architect developer at Theodo. And uh, I want to talk to you about Git branching models because I love Git. And uh, I hate to see uh, a lot of people misusing it and uh, have trouble in their projects. And I have a huge uh, history uh, completely messed up. So, to start with. Okay, so the first workflow you can have with Git is no workflow. Okay, what is no workflow? It's really simple. It's git pull, git push, and that's it. Okay, so uh, what is the advantage? What are the uh, advantages to this workflow? Okay, first advantage: it's completely lighter if you don't mess up with the history. It no branching, so really it's simple as. Uh, as simple, and uh, it's complete. It's really fast to use it because uh, you don't have uh, any of our heads, so you just git pull, git push. Nah, nah, nah. Really cool, okay. And it has the best bisect experience I've ever had because everything is linear. So when you're looking for something, it's just a direct parent or something, and no problem at all. Okay, it has some drawbacks, unfortunately. So. When you have multiple people working on the same project, it's really difficult to have uh, no workflow. Because someone is uh, going to start a feature, and uh, another one is going to start another feature, and you're going to mix the commits, and it's going to uh, break, uh, break everywhere because you want to push, oh, but someone has already pushed, and okay, so it's a problem. Okay, how do you do a uh, code review when uh, you don't have branches? Uh, unfortunately, uh, the best tool for code reviewing for me is to use a uh, GitHub platform uh, like. So you don't have pull requests uh, without branches, so it's a bit messed up. How do you revert a feature? Okay, so uh, let's say you have a feature that is spanned uh, in uh, around uh, three or four commits. So you have to revert all the commits and find them, uh, it's a bit tough. Okay. And uh, last but not least, you can only maintain one version. What does it mean? It means you cannot make a release with unfinished features. So if uh, you want to push a certain version of your code, you have to have all your features finished or not in the code. Because uh, then you would have a, a broken uh, release. Okay, so it's just too simple in my opinion. You should not use that if you have uh, at least two developers on your project. Okay, next, feature branches. It's the most common uh, pattern that you can use in your Git workflow is to use branches for your features. Okay, kind of obvious. Okay, can go on. What are the advantages of using branches for your features? You can gain a macro view of your project because each branch corresponds to a feature. Uh, a tip, name your branches uh, with something that is meaningful for you, uh, especially if you're using GitHub tools because, uh, or just Git uh, uh, with the command line, because the name of the branch will go in the merge commit, so you can uh, retrieve uh, which branch uh, it was uh, at the time, and you can know where the features are. Which leads me to, you can revert a rule feature very easily. You just revert, revert the merge commit of the feature and then it reverts automatically all the changes that were in the commits of the feature. It's very easy to work with multiple pers persons, with multiple people. It means that you're going to start a feature, someone else is going to start another feature. You can push uh, however you like because you're on uh, uh, different branches. So no more uh, conflict, git push that doesn't work, etc. Et okay? And you have code review with pull request, which is, in my opinion, something very awesome and completely necessary in, on uh, nearly every project. Okay, but it still has some drawbacks. It's more complex than a workflow. An example of what is very complex to do with feature branches is rebase, preserve, merge. What is rebase, preserve, merge? Let's say 
you have a history with a lot of branching, merging, <coughs> very complex, and you're like, oh, there is one commit in this history that I need to get rid of, but I want to keep the whole schema uh, look like. I mean, I want to keep all the merges, I want to keep all the branching, and you have to do reverse preserve merge to do that, and it's very, very difficult. So, okay, it's more complex, yes. And you still can only maintain one version. What does it mean? Even if you have feature branches, once uh, you have merged them in your uh, developing branch or master branch, they are merged. So <laughs> they are unfinished. You can't make a release out of it. So the, that's still a drawback. Okay, next, I'm going to introduce you to Gitflow that you may already know. Gitflow is an awesome uh, workflow, uh, really more complex. Okay, I'm not sure if we can, uh, can you read it or not? Okay. I'm gonna put it for screen. Okay, it's better. So, okay, we're, we're gonna start here. Uh, how does it work? You have a developed branch, which is uh, your branch for all your features that you are currently developing, but are not yet re ready for uh, release uh, maybe. So you're branching from the developed branch into feature branches, so the same as the uh, feature branches we had uh, in the last workflow. And when you want to make a release, here you have the green branch, which is a release branch, and uh, you're starting from your developed version, you are uh, maybe uh, making some other commits in it or some hotfix, you have a, a flow of uh, back merging, some, uh, some commits or things like that. And when everything is ready, you merge into the blue branch, which is the master branch with uh, uh, tagged versions. So what do you gain uh, over uh, just feature branches? You have a, uh, a processed uh, hotfix and release uh, uh, process. So uh, it's uh, really more uh, organized. Okay, so let's go back to presentation. Yeah, how do we put it in the full screen? Surely it's here. Okay. So what are the advantages of using Gitflow. Okay, Gitflow comes with a tool which is named Gitflow, uh, which is a command line tool you can use to abide by the, the workflow and it helps you uh, doing uh, faster things with the, the, the flow. What can you do with the tool? You can create a release, you can create feature branches, and uh, you can merge uh, features very easily uh, what you what you used to need uh, was uh, something like five or six commands to do things and here it takes only one command and it's very uh, very well organized okay so that helps you gain a, a very big macro view you can uh, really look at your project very easily because you have some uh, in the tool uh, you have the possibility to have a change logs in the release that uh, will tell you which feature branches were uh, merged or not and things like that, like that. So it's very, very cool for big projects with big teams. Big team can start at three developers, I don't know. Uh, and uh, it has a lot of supporter, uh, something like uh, 13k uh, stars on GitHub, so something uh, kind of awesome. So you have a lot of questions, stack overflow, a lot of answers. You, you're, you're really not lost when you're using a tool like that. And you, you get all the uh, advantages of tier branches because uh, it's based on it, obviously. And so, uh, as I said, you have a really hotfix process uh, well-defined, which is uh, really cool because uh, it helps uh, deployments a lot. Okay, but it still has some drawbacks. Okay, first drawbacks. Obviously, it's really more complex, so with uh, more complexity uh, comes uh, more slowness. And uh, it's uh, tough to master because you have uh, another tool uh, on Git to, uh, to learn. 
And, uh, and yes, uh, you have a lot of branches everywhere, a lot of merging uh, in a way, in the other way, so you have to, to be really, uh, really conscious uh, about that. Okay, it really shines with semantic versioning because uh, you have the tagging uh, which is uh, embedded in it uh, with uh, semantic versioning. But if you're not using semantic versioning, it's kind of not really that useful. So, okay, and uh, if you want to pick the features that you're gonna include in a release, you still cannot do that. Uh, once you have merged the features in the develop branch, they're gonna be in the next release. Or you can revert them, but uh, you're gonna lose them. So, you, you, you cannot say that, uh, okay, uh, next release, uh, I want feature A, B, and C, but uh, feature G is not gonna come. Uh, I've tested it, it's okay, uh, it's in the blue branch, but not for this uh, time, it's gonna be next month. That you cannot do. Okay, next I'm gonna talk to you about TWGit, which is an awesome tool, which is very similar to Gitflow, but with a bit of difference. So here we can see that you can make uh, hotfixes, release, and what is the real difference? It's that when you're making a feature, you're making it in a separate branch, which is feature branch, and you're only merging it in release uh, as you wish, manually. That means when you're starting a release, it starts from the last, uh, last release point, and you're choosing which features are going to uh, come into the release, which is the, the step TWGit TW feature merge into release 4210. Okay, so what are the advantages of this method? Okay, so it comes also with a tool to do that. So it's really awesome, a uh, very good tool. Uh, it can help you uh, keep a, a good view about your, your project uh, globally. It's also amazing for big projects and big teams, etc. Still also the these feature branches. The result fix uh, process also well defined, but what is really, really different from Gitflow is the demo branches. What are demo branches? Whenever you want, you can start a demo branch, which is really the same thing as a release branch. It starts from the last table release, and in this demo branch, you can put whatever feature you, will, uh, you want to see. So let's say you have uh, an agile workflow where you want to make all your features tested by a product owner. So you can start a demo branch which will be named, for example, staging or validation. And in this demo branch, you merge all your, your features, your product owner validates them uh, as, it, uh, as he or she wishes. And when the time comes to make a release, you can pick the features that, has, that are going to be in the release independently from uh, the features that have been validated in the demo branch staging. So that's really, really, really awesome. That's what uh, my next uh, last uh, advantage uh, was about. So that is really amazing. I've already used it uh, on, a, on a huge project uh, and it uh, really worked kind of flawlessly. Kind of, uh, we're going to talk about this uh, just a bit later. Uh, it's something really amazing. Okay, so the drawbacks. Once again, the same drawbacks as in Gitflow, as in it's a really complex workflow. It has not a lot of support, so that is really uh, a problem. You have to be able to dig in it if uh, something's not working. You won't find uh, a lot of answers on the net if you have a problem. So be prepared to really uh, dig into the tool in the mud uh, to, to work things out uh, if it doesn't uh, out of the box. <coughs> a lot of the documentation is still in French. There, there is a general documentation in English, but uh, the real uh, master doc is in French. That is a huge problem. You have to work in French for, uh, to remaster the tool. And, uh, if you want, of course, you can contribute, it's on GitHub, so please uh, go ahead and uh, help translate the documentation if you're French, and bilingual, of course.
Okay, and uh, the problem with uh, picking, cherry picking the feature that you want to get into release is that when you have git conflicts between features, it's a nightmare. It's really the worst thing ever. You, you don't know how to do it, how do you keep the conflicts from uh, restarting in another branch, how do you use git r -r 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 to uh, help you in this workflow. It's really, really complicated and uh, a lot of time uh, I've lost like countless hours trying to, to know how I can uh, remove a feature from my next release or uh, oh, but it, it was uh, dependent from another feature and we already uh, based the commit on them or uh, how do you... Okay, so that is the, the big problem with TW kits. With amazing powers come great and complexity. <laughs> okay, so uh, another workflow that is uh, quite popular on uh, open source projects uh, on GitHub is maintaining multiple releases at the same time. I'm good, not gonna do it in this session because uh, I did not have the time to prepare it, but I, uh, I recommend you uh, very strongly to go look uh, at uh, one of my favorite projects on uh, GitHub, which is Symfony which uh, is uh, maintaining uh, multiple releases uh, at the same time with a, with a workflow, with LTS and uh, things like that. Uh, it's complex. Once again, uh, the more you want to make, uh, the less easy it is. So here is that. Okay, a few tips uh, when uh, working with uh, Git uh, with your team. So first question, uh, which uh, it's a very recurrent question, merge versus rebase. So I suppose you are familiar, familiar with uh, what these uh, two operations do. Uh, if you are using only merge, one of the advantages, advantages is that you are not using push force at all, which is cool because push force is kind of dangerous and uh, not easy to master, so you won't make any mistake. So of course rebase does not have this advantage because when you're rebasing a feature you have to push force because you're rewriting history. But when you're only using merge, you have a really kind of world's history being like you 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 just gonna start to, to see branching everywhere, merging back everywhere and a chain of doom brand merges and it's not very very cool to, to look at this story if you want to know what happened in the past it's impossible to read. And with Rebase, you have your beautiful and a really uh, meaningful history. So my recommendation, of course, is learn the way of the force and use Rebase. Just learn to use it and uh, it's gonna save you uh, a lot of time in your work. Okay, merge no FF. So what merge no FF stands for? It means that uh, you can't make fast forward merge commits. What is a fast forward merge commit? It's something you do, for example, when you're doing a git pull. Git pull is uh, the just uh, two operations. It's git fetch, git fetch, plus git merge. And when you're using no FF, you're not allowing merge commits, which means that uh, you force a real merge commit with uh, at least two parents to be made when you're merging a future branch. Why is it cool to, to use it? Because when you do that, in your history, when you're looking at uh, your uh, log in a graph, you see the branches and uh, you can very easily know when a feature starts, when a feature ends, what was the name of the feature, etc. etc. So you sacrifice a bit of history simplicity because you have uh, more branching, but you gain a lot of contextuality because you, you, you really know when the feature starts, when the feature ends. And that's really, really cool in my opinion. And Accepting a pull request, if you didn't know, does exactly that. When you're doing a feature uh, with a pull request, uh, even if it's uh, possible to make a fast forward commit, GitHub uh, make explicitly uh, uh, no FF uh, merge commit. So what does it look like? Here is a merge commit with a no FF, and just uh, on the right, it's a commit with a, a fast, forward, fast forward merge commit. So, last tips, I think. Okay, deployment and releases. So, I encourage you 
to use branches for uh, knowing what is the state of your current uh, environment states. What it means that if you have uh, three server like uh, staging, pre-production, and production, use branch to mark on which commits are these uh, different environments, and use th these branches for deployment. So you always know when you're looking at your uh, history, where are my environments uh, <coughs> right now? It's very, very cool, and it helps to know if there is no uh, rewritten history or thing like that. Uh, you can uh, look at it uh, very easily. Use tags for releases to easily get change logs. Uh, why is that cool? Because suppose you, you have a, a production environment that has seen a lot of releases uh, releases recently. You may know its current state with a production branch, but you might not know when was the last time you you merged, uh, you created a release. And so, uh, to know what is the difference between the, the last time you made a release and this time, you can easily just make a git diff between the two tags and you have uh, all the features that are present in it. Use semantic versioning if it makes sense only. It doesn't make sense to use a semantic versioning if you're just developing an app where you are the sole consumer of this app. So, okay. And yes, last tip, perfect workflow doesn't exist. Okay, so it's very important to, to understand that I'm not recommending you to use a particular workflow. I'm recommending you to use at least feature branches, but adapt to what makes you efficient. It's just a tool, it's not a, a value. Don't uh, uh, swear by it, it's not a... Uh, that's not what's going to make you uh, the, the coolest project ever. Understand the differences between the different workflows and choose very carefully what you want or do not want to do in your project. In any case, deploy the most often possible. Whatever the workflow you're choosing, when you're deploying and making release more often, it leads to less complex in Git, it leads to a better value for the client or for your project, and uh, so uh, every workflow is helped when you deploy more often. Okay, that was all. Do you have any question for me? Yes. <coughs> How do the tools like GitFlow or TWGit integrate with GitHub? Because I've seen on the documentation that it tends to do the merges manually. How does it integrate with pull requests and stuff like that? Okay, if I uh, remember correctly, uh, the, it's not integrated in it. So you have to do a pull request yourself on GitHub, for example. And after that, you're using the tool to do the merge and not GitHub to do the merge. So it's a bit uh, awkward, but I'm pretty sure we can work something out to integrate the tools in GitHub and uh, maybe make a contribution, or maybe it's already done by someone uh, who was uh, fed up uh, with doing that. Uh, the feature of the DWGit uh, for uh, having each of your features added one by one and all of that, it's a thing that's purely a GitHub workflow. It does not help you in any way if you want to deploy just, uh, for example, if you wanted to do A-B testing and deploy two versions, it does not add anything to your code, it's just the, the workflow. Yeah, it's, it's just for the Git workflow. It's not a, a feature uh, disabling switch or something mm -hmm. like that. It's, uh, Really, just when you're you you're like uh, three months ahead of your next uh, uh, last release, it's not good, and you have to make a release fast. But you you don't want to to use uh, this particular uh, feature that is not really complete, uh, not ready uh, for the marketing to be uh, released. So you want to pick uh, the feature that uh, makes sense for your, your next release. <coughs> uh, when you talk about merge uh, versus Base. Yeah. You said that in Rebase you may have to do uh, push force and GitHub uh, introduced a while ago a feature where you can block particular branches to forbid push yeah. forces on them. Does it like get in conflict with the Rebase way of Okay, uh, the, the way GitHub and GitLab uh, and uh, also similar tools protect branches is in my opinion something very cool because uh, one of the things that you should refrain from is 
rewriting history on a branch that is shared with uh, someone else. So when you want to push force, you want to push force on your feature branches only. <coughs> so for example, you have a, sorry about that. Uh, so when you have a, a feature that is not up to date, that is not, uh, uh, you, you can't merge it because you have conflicts, you want only to rebase this particular feature on the latest work, and it's very cool to uh, protect the master branch and the, the pre-production branch, or these kind of branches, from uh, pushing force because you know that these branches are shared be between uh, different people and uh, different uh, environments. Is that clear? Yeah. Moi, je fais des branches de feature, mais en général, c'est tout. Je fais des branches de feature et j'ai euh, des branches qui représentent mes différents environnements. <coughs> Et ce sont ensuite suivant les projets, ça diffère, de savoir est-ce que je comment je merge l'un dans l'autre ou pas, euh, qui est en avance de qui, ça c'est pas toujours très clair. Il y a des gens aussi qui recommandent d'avoir une branche master qui n'est pas du tout une branche liée au, aux environnements, mais qui est en fait la branche de développement courante euh, qui a été acceptée et validée. Voilà, c'est dans ton workflow agile, si tu dis que tu as une branche de développement, c'est ce qui est déployé mais pas encore validé sur mon environnement de développement, et master c'est ce qui a été validé complètement et qu'on accepte de partager la communauté. Any other questions? Uh, regarding your experience with conflicts, which of these models, from your point of view, have given you least, the least amount of conflicts when you try to just deploy some features? Oh, the simplest like... possible. The no workflow has given me the least conflicts possible. <laughs> conflicts arise from branching. So the more branching you do, the more conflicts you have. It's kind of uh, automatic. But if your goal is to, for, if you wanted to implement a project where you could actually enable and disable uh, features, which model do you think would suit the best? Ah. In my opinion, the, the best model is determined by the size of the project. So it's uh, determined by the number of people working on it and the visibility on the history you want to gain. So I don't have a general answer for this one. But I would say that on a huge open source project, where there are like uh, more than a uh, hundred uh, contributors, you definitely want to have something very rigid and uh, very processed to be able to look at the past uh, very easily. Okay, we can have one more question. Okay, thank you very much.